What is up, everyone? I am Charlie Shrem. You are watching and listening a special edition of Untold Stories, where twice a week, and now this week, three times a week, we get to sit together now live and talk to some of the most brilliant people in the room, in our industry, really outside of our industry, in all of technology. But those people are trying to use the tools of cryptocurrency to make the world a better place and to, to understand how this like huge, massive wealth shift is happening. And, and my guest of the Harmony Network, Stephen C., thank you so much for coming. And what was so crazy is we were just saying that we believe that COVID actually accelerated the growth of crypto by, by how many years? Yeah, absolutely. Charles, great to be here. Um, it has been an honor. We have been such a big fan of yours. But most of all, just really appreciate the journey you have in the last decade. And now getting to share the untold story is why we are here. You know, Harmony is a, is a blockchain platform that's designed to, to facilitate Harmony. So when I was, you know, we were doing the research and understanding what Harmony is and how it all works, you look at Bitcoin and you look at um, all these different blockchains and protocols where they're optimized for one specific thing. And it mm -hmm. seems that Harmony is optimized to create as many blocks as possible, <laughs> as fast as possible to basically emulate like a hyper real time database spreadsheet type of situation. However, with, and I'm totally giving it all away, verifiable mm -hmm. random function, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know it. Can you give everyone a, a brief overview of who you are, where you came Absolutely. from? And then also we're going to talk about, you know, you, you had a, you have a great background in your, mm -hmm. in your life. You reverse engineered ICQ. And I mm -hmm. always wondered how did you, how do people reverse engineer software? You know, when I was a kid, I never understood uh, that concept of it. I, I want to understand that. Um, you worked at Microsoft. You were a, an engineer at search ranking at Apple, and you worked at Google. Mm -hmm. You even started your own mobile search before called Spot Setter. We mm -hmm. all want to understand how we get our companies in the first Google rankings. Maybe you can tell us a secret at the end of the episode. <laughs> sure. Stephen, welcome, my yeah. friend. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad that you un for so many threads that we can really tell the story. Honestly, telling my childhood story, why I got into the whole computers and programming, coming from what you asked, right? What is reverse engineering? To me, that's just a fancy word when all of us trying to figure out the world. For me, at that time, childhood was playing with a computer that no one gave me the manual. Tell me where's the source code that you need to reverse engineer it. It's the same way that uh, I know, Charlie, you really figure out the whole Bitcoin and how to start a business, how to move money around when you're in high school and getting into the instant, right? It's the same thing. Reverse engineering means no one tell you the rules. No one want to give you Ooh, the like that. chance of the rules. And you just go figure it out by not, not having source code. No one give you a chance to say, hey, here's the business guideline how you make money, right? Reverse engineering literally, man. And at that time, looking at the wire of every network package, how IC code, meaning at that time, it's like Telegram right now and sure. uh, like Messenger now that you just figure out what you can do with that system. I still have my ICQ number. <laughs> no way. Yeah. I have a six digit. So yeah. I was really one of the early ones. You saw my Twitter. It's only four character. So sometime oh. when you get in so early into the space, whether Bitcoin or now to me is Ethereum and the whole blockchain space, right? It really allows you to play with every single thing. Rather than everyone say, no, you can't do this. Here are the rules. I'm going to catch you if you do that. So I think my background has always been, can I not know the rules, but allow to play, right? So uh, since then, whether doing a start in Silicon Valley and all the way to doing search ranking at Apple Maps, give me that perspective. So let me just finish with this story, right? When I started at Google, I started at Google Maps. I just say, I don't know anything about how to build maps or geospatial uh, like uh, uh, search engine, but I want to really work on the most exciting field. At that time, only 50 million users were uh, doing that. 2000, um, 2000 uh, like uh, seven at that time. When I joined Apple Maps, day one, even though their maps was not as good, 150 million users. So it made the problem so much bigger, so much more exciting. It's how I see where blockchain Bitcoin is able to do too. Day one, the software will be usable literally by anyone, meaning more than 8 billion people in the world. That's why it's exciting. Wow, you totally blew me away on that. Thank you. I like what you said about 
reverse engineering life without knowing the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of the way people looked at me and a lot of the people uh, in those early years was like, how can you rewrite the whole financial system, rebuild a whole new one, you know, or like really uh, from from scratch, essentially, especially starting from just the, the Satoshi code, you know, and, the, and, and everything. And how can you go from that without knowing how the current financial system works? Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is maybe it's better. Mm hmm. I think it's both, right? Like there's a reason why every generation get to think about the same old problem in a completely different way. The good thing is finally we have both communication open source so that all the knowledge is accumulated. At the same time, it always requires a new, what I call a radical perspective. Radical is the word I use a lot. Radical markets, radically fair. Because we don't think about that way. When I use radical, I meant fundamentally different, fundamentally sure. new, right? Otherwise, we would just keep on adding like like ten more percent increment to the revenue and like two percent better one more feature per quarter way of changing things. I think it's really time that all these open source open incentives composable uh, like transaction make all the differences. We're the past year or two have taught us that we're going to be, especially the fact that during these mini bear markets or whatever they are that decentralized finance and a multi-blockchain ecosystem, a multi-protocol ecosystem will exist. Building software on top of those blockchains and protocols that are optimized for different things mm -hmm. is what the next businesses will be. You're seeing those mm -hmm. companies actually go public, getting listed on NASDAQ nowadays, uh, crypto mining companies for all different blockchains. Mm -hmm. What is Harmony's role in that mm -hmm. multi-blockchain ecosystem and what mm -hmm. kind of sets it apart? Mm -hmm. Harmony will be the bridge to bring all the blockchains together. And I think that's really where the state of the art of whether fintech, blockchain, and all these different networks must have, right? We keep wishing that government and banks will work with Bitcoin and Ethereum and like any of the DeFi traders. We couldn't even work with each other, right? I think what last year have really shown is not just we have Bitcoin and Ethereum anymore. There are actually multiple usable networks, whether Cosmo, Polkadot, right? Can we have a bridge so that when we have liquidity on one side, quickly be able to trade asset or even NFT moving around? When you say multi multi chain worlds, worlds, we know it's always yeah. going to be true, but finally it happened last year. But what we still don't have is we keep saying that things are composable, liquidity is uh, uh, is uh, fungible but we actually don't have the minimal connectivity. Worst of all, we don't have a non-custodial, trustless way of bridging them together. So Harmony Row is really thinking about, now we have a network of decentralized validators. Can that be used for anything about the bridge, even your wallet? They call it a smart contract wallet. Why don't you put it on the chain? So that when we talk to Bitcoin, we actually want it to be wrapping the asset I understand. A, not on chain way. That's that's a very very cool way of looking at things, and I like that. I've been very impressed with a lot of the different ecosystems, uh, like you said, the Cosmos ecosystem, and how many different uh, blockchains are part of that. Uh, you you know, and now you have Harmony as a bridge, mm -hmm. and then because all of the validators, so mm -hmm. those who understand all how all other blockchains work, uh, most of them launch with a certain amount of validators. Mm -hmm. You can stake your coins or tokens. You can. Um, and be like a top 21 or a top 100. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that's how those miners per se in a proof of stake uh, blockchain. And in a second, can you explain how, you know, your effective proof of stake consensus mm -hmm. works uh, mm -hmm. in this type of situation? Yeah, I think uh, the key idea where Bitcoin brought it is we're not thinking about whether 21 or even 100 anymore. Can we go to like 10,000, 100,000 of these miners and validators and coming back to finally where the state of our Ethereum 2 is what everyone's thinking, right? They think about 64, even 1,000 um, validators to be possible. But what is really missing are two key things. The first one is actually whether the sticking is radically fair, meaning can they still fight the centralization? Now, when you're thinking staking, you're thinking centralized, unfortunately. So how? how? Exactly, right? Uh, to me, it's actually really, really hard to solve, but we try. When we call effective, 
proof of stake. That's what we meant. Can we fight the centralization of the top sticker? The more they stake, the more they earn, right? And then the bottom too, right? When you have no stake, how can you ever get into the network? Satoshi have the dream. You only need yeah. one CPU. You only need one person to be part of it. And it's still true today. It's just that we got lower and lower chance. But then, honest, honestly, even Ethereum too failed that now. You have to, such, to have such a high deposit before you get on it. Yeah. Charlie. That's the, the, the failure of the permissionless blockchain as we have it today with proof of stake. And my friends are some of the early proof of stake, exactly. you know, um, is that it, it, there is a, a, an obstacle. You need permission exactly. from all the other stakeholders exactly. and they can go get to not allow you to even own or partic to participate in that network. Theoretically, Absolutely. it could happen on Ethereum or any other network today. Bitcoin is still king, not because of where, when it started, but because of some uh, ultimate idea about decentralization that we are all still trying to learn and mimic. Right. The fact that I need, I don't know now, like $50,000 to even start the game is meaningless, right? Like Bitcoin literally, man, just connect to the network, mine whatever you want, have a CPU, even though it's very slow and not possible to compete with ASAP now, you can, right? And to us, that's what we wanted that back. Effective decentralization, effective stick that you can still participate to the network is going to be so critical. But on the other end, then how do you incentivize people to secure the network if there's no incentive or it's random? So we've come up with the idea that uh, we absolutely need all the stake to secure the whole network. But can the oh. top stickers only, learn, uh, only earn up to, up to a cap reward, right? So that will really drive towards whether 10,000 or 100,000 is up to the network as a parameter. But the top one don't need to keep earning beyond, let's say, already 10% of the network. Same thing with the bottom, though. Because they're so low and so hard to even get elected. And most of the pool of sick network couldn't support, literally cannot support, like the algorithm protocol cannot support more than 100 by design, right? We have by design but sharding to begin with, but even today, 1,000 stickers. So we know even the algorithm works. But, but hardest of all is the economic feasibility. We want to make sure that the bottom is not getting the empathy or not earning enough to be sustaining. So the top, we are capping it. The bottom, we are lifting it. So that we have the whole concept of whether universal basic income so that anyone can participate in earn. A lot of, we hear this term a lot, sharding, uh, mm -hmm. especially Vitalik talks about it a lot uh, when it comes to Ethereum 2 and 3.0. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then during 2017, when we mm -hmm. were dealing with uh, if... Or, or the question was in 2016, really, or 2014, yeah. really, actually, I was, <laughs> when I was doing yeah. my sabbatical in, in prison, was that yeah. should Bitcoin scale now faster than it's been scaling currently? And that's where the block size war kind of came mm -hmm. from. For sure. Um, sharding was thrown around as a potential and For still sure. kind of is. What, what, what is that? Yeah. Harmony is actually the first proof of stake and sharding mainnet. So we actually spent lots of time looking at how uh, Bitcoin is looking to lightning and uh, every scaling solution, both on the network system, block size that we were investigating. But then there's only one solution to something called horizontal scaling, uniform scaling. That's easier to understand. Sounds <laughs> No, I'm such so a geek. Let me just <laughs> easily explain, right? It just means whenever you have a new demand, you can just say, hey, here's one more node to the system, one more shard to the system, and then you will have some more capacity. It's exactly how you will spin up an AWS cloud computing that just said, yes, you already figure out the inter-shard communication. You already figure out how to make sure that you can add one more shard without breaking the network. You can do the economics as well as all the cross-shard and the state division all works already. Now it's just up to the demand so that you can uniformly, horizontally scale it, which gets very confusing now because Cosmo have a different hub. Polkadot used to be calling what, what is the substrate, and now it's also called Shard. So everyone call everyone Shard. Now. It's basically scaling in real time. Exactly, right? Okay. On demand, right? On demand but scaling. The interesting thing is uniform, right? So Where, everyone has to agree Cosmo, on it. Right? Yeah. 
like they, they always say, oh, if you want to do EVM, right, go to this particular like substrate or this particular node, right? Mm. Or even Avalanche, right? They have a very amazing scalable consensus. But then when you do EVM, you have to go back to the same node, what one single node, right? So what we meant by uni uniform is every all of our nodes is uh, EVM enabled. Each node, each shard are identical. That's how uniform it is. Wait, with Avalanche, you need to connect with with one node to 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 access the EVM. That's very interesting. Yeah, like you heard a, about P P yeah. network, C network, X network because they handle things differently. Let's take a step back for a second, right? Like. Sure. Okay, so I want to take a step back because we've talked about a lot, a lot of very, very uh, uh, deep topics. And I want mm -hmm. to understand that. Do you believe that decentralization, is it a, are we, is it a, I kind of talk about on the show a lot, a path to decentralization. Blockchains mm -hmm. or protocols, networks, uh, platforms, whatever you want to call them, are are always on a path to, and you have to create what, what you're talking about to, make, to ensure mm -hmm. uh, that decentralization now into the future. Are you saying that uh, that you think that a lot of these blockchains that we're putting a lot of capital into right now are still mm -hmm. somewhat centralized or mm -hmm. too centralized for for comfort? For sure, like mm. two 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 criteria, right? Just ask yourself, be honest, right? Are we designing or de operating at the ten thousand node snap level yet? Right. That's the right level, by the way, and that came from That's two true. different people from Block very Demon basic, and from the Pocket minimal, Network. Right? Yeah, it can show us notes. in the first two or three years that is possible, right? It's one thing to say that Ethereum started and got really bottlenecked. Even Ethereum got that right, right? If we start today, if we start like we started three years ago, can we at least not slip back, right, to twenty one or hundred nodes? Right? Second thing, right? Now that you have all these network and you we call that scalable, and that's why all these like uh, second generation Ethereum chain started. Yeah, can we scalable in a uniform way? It's one thing to get saying, oh, once we have this problem, we have this node. Once we have this problem, let's do that and stay sharp. We have we want to do the bridge. Let's do this right. It's another to really show that even in ten years, I'm very confident sharding is the only approach. You guys checking out the Summer Olympics in Tokyo? It's on right now, and the awesome folks at Bit Casino and Coin Gaming are giving away amazing Bitcoin bonuses and cash prizes. These guys have been our sponsor for over a year, always giving away so many free things to all of my listeners. So go check them out, the Bit Casino All Star Team. From now until August eighth, you can unlock rotating prizes, free spins, cash incentives, Bitcoin bonuses when you complete their daily missions. So all you got to do is head to my Olympics promo page. If you go to untoldstories.link forward slash bit casino, just go there all the time. Untoldstories.link forward slash bit casino. We're always giving things away there. We just gave away three Teslas a few months ago. Now during the Olympics, there's going to be a bit casino all-star team giving away a lot of cool stuff happening. It's a lot of fun. I love doing it. Thank you guys so much for making untold stories possible. I love you. This is a, Friendly public service announcement reminding you guys that if you're using Uniswap or OneInch or any of these other decentralized exchanges, you shouldn't be. You should be using our awesome sponsor, PowerSwap, because PowerSwap is a decentralized aggregator that sits on top of all of these different other decentralized exchanges to give you the maximum liquidity. But not only do they work on Ethereum, but now they work on Polygon and Binance Smart Chain. So you can do all of these type of crazy swaps. Defining, you know, going from one token to another, to USDC, to USDT, uh, to wrapped Bitcoin, to all these different coins and tokens, all do it in a decentralized way. Furthermore, they're now integrated in the Ledger Live platform. I love these guys. I've been using PowerSwap for over a year now because you save all of those transaction fees every time you have to hit one of these blockchains for like approving your MetaMask or sending a transaction. PowerSwap, like brings it all together, you predefine everything, and then you hit submit on the smart contract platform, and it does it all in one shot for you. So you can check them out at untoldstories.link forward slash PowerSwap. Thank you guys for making my show an amazing one. That's untoldstories.link forward slash PowerSwap. When blockchains decide to change how they scale, you have to constantly be changing everything all the time. And I actually wanted to know, um, I was looking up, I was looking up um, how many nodes Ethereum had running, how many nodes are running on Ethereum, I should say, mm -hmm. during the DAO hack? Because mm -hmm. 
a lot of people still use that. You, myself included, I'm guilty of that of using classic, that as a, yeah. yeah the classic example of like why Ethereum lost its you know lost its decentralization along the way and set a negative precedent. But mm -hmm. if you can tell me that there was like a, a huge like a very minuscule amount of nodes and mine, miners compared, I have to look up the statistics at the time compared mm -hmm. to now, which I suspect is the truth. Mm -hmm. Then maybe we need to lay off Ethereum a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult. <laughs> I don't mean that it's uh, it's so important, but so 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 critical, right? And all the people talking yeah. about technical and ideas and research to get this right. To me, the criteria is very simple: can your can the system, whether ever or you're driving towards to ten ten thousand nodes, right? Let's do that, right? Because uh, that's what really, really the world has seen the power of Bitcoin, Ethereum. They, at one point, you still put work, but it was able to achieve that, right? Change all you want, like do any other scheme you want, but let's not forget decentralization is the only reason. What do you think some of the, what do you think some of the impediments right now that we're having, uh, you know, this, there's a huge spotlight on our industry right now, mm -hmm. as there should be at times, you know, to keep us all in check. But mm -hmm. what are some of the biggest hurdles like that are uh, preventing our growth as an industry, DeFi, mm -hmm. Harmony in general, Bitcoin? W wallets, right? Yeah. As you saw, like Jack just talked about the uh, um, Square and hardware wallet as you were tweeting some of the like hacks and even the NFT get hacks these days. Yeah. Anyone going to MetaMask is so scared. They don't even know what happened. To me, like, know, thinking like... about wallet security. Yeah, it's really true. Like you yeah. don't want to keep accumulating and just keep playing this game and, and then one day you don't even know what happened to it, right? I think the whole new concept called show show and keyless wallet, uh, some of the research we are driving, we have a prototype that came out. It's gonna be so key so that you can literally ask your mom and any friends that they don't care about um, how to do security with their banks, but yes. we still trust that it's possible to be participating in this new economy. We have, I have a friend who passed away uh, many years ago and he's an old mm. Bitcoin OG. And mm. I remember one of the things I asked him, he, he was one of like the first people to, to like um, storm out of Morgan Stanley when he worked there because they wouldn't really? let him be friends with Bitcoiners. Like they, you know, they told him he had, he, it's 2012, I think. And he's like, wow. I quit because Bitcoin is the future. Um, and he, I remember him saying that Bitcoin will have hit its breaking point. And he he would have used the term crypto, but back then it really was only Bitcoin and the, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. other coins were more of like just jokes and things like that. Mm -hmm. He said Bitcoin will be successful when the applications that we use mm -hmm. decide to pivot to crypto or mm -hmm. pivot to Bitcoin mm -hmm. instead of the financial network that we already use. Exactly. And I, I think about that a lot. And recently I noticed, I'm like, have we kind of hit that? I mean, you go to mm -hmm. PayPal or Venmo or Square mm -hmm. or Cash mm -hmm. or anywhere and you have like, mm -hmm. you know, it literally could have two tabs, fiat mm -hmm. and crypto. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It just has regular and then crypto. It's but true. it's kind of, if you look at it is, we've kind of hit that point, right? It's mm -hmm. these apps that we use now are giving us the choice of two different, mm -hmm. more sometimes three or four whole mm -hmm. different financial rails. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think like, the journey of the last 10 years really now is very common, normal for any Silicon Valley conversations or bankers in New York to talk about that way, right? But I do think just like centralization, the whole idea that there will be more product, fintech, banks, government, company uh, adopting crypto and Bitcoin is, is really what we hope. At the same so, time that the also amazing thing about um, decentralized technology is you can be your own custodial. Right, the fact that Square is providing a um, open source and even open participation network is great. Facebook is going to launch maybe even this year. That's all good, right? We need help. Anyone didn't need customer service, a nice UX, and you just like have uh, some some uh, like guardian for you is great. On the other hand, as you are OG in Bitcoin, you also know that why don't I hold my key as well? Holding key is one thing, right? I don't want to lose it. So I think the whole new idea now, the social wallet that allow your friends, keyless wallet that allow just Google Authenticator for you to be not thinking about passwords. Sure. Just whatever one device that you always hold, which is your mobile phone, is going to be the key to adoption. I think we need to go even further than that. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look at what a stable coin is, it's essentially, mm -hmm. a, like let's just say a stable coin that has a, and I totally agree with you a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, 
you get me excited when you talk about these things because I'm like, yes, he gets it. He gets it. I'm still, <laughs> I, I still get excited when people get understand this industry, and I'm like, yeah, it's 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 here now. Like we've Absolutely. we're around. But um, so I was using the stablecoin example. If we look at what a stablecoin is with a billion dollar market cap, for example, that's a billion dollars of people willing to put their money there, you know, mm -hmm. temporarily because they can sell the stable For coin, sure. sell out of it. Then that stable coin can use that capital mm -hmm. to to just basically maintain and break and break even. Mm -hmm. We imagine if we can take that a step further where mm -hmm. that money can be used to invest and to build roads and to build oh, infrastructure. Yeah. Imagine if we can do that but in a non-custodial way where you can have your money on your phone and you know, the local government wants to build a bridge and you could, in a, in a decentralized way, participate in the fundraising of that bridge. Mm -hmm. You know, what you're talking about is the future of people going together to Absolutely. Chile or Argentina and building out new mm -hmm. cities on their own because mm -hmm. they're looking for places to, we could have seen that more with, that's, I see that as, as our future. Absolutely. Um, what about decentralized basic income? All these people should have the wealth already and to be able to support their own town or like government or public goods that they want. I thought I saw your tweet too, asking how come all these people are just like taking all the reserve and giving so little like to, to, the, to the deposit as well as doing so little with the capital. I think it's finally come to that point, right? Yeah. Whether like you are in Florida, whether Miami mayor, really thinking about whether there'll be a county, um, stable coins and a county issue of uh, uh, bonds. I think it's really coming. I, I think the policy is actually opening up because of Bitcoin. Everyone see that not just as a security, but have a way to have a global yeah. uh, impact of any policy or asset. Which, what are the best platforms uh, mm -hmm. that you've built Harmonize for, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Harmony for, like uh, mm -hmm. Harmonize too? So what, are the, <laughs> what are the, you know, if you're looking at the best type of uh, uh, dApps or, or application mm -hmm. software, uh, what do you want to see built? Yeah, I actually agree with you. Stablecoin would always, always be critical infrastructure. So as you mentioned that whether US, USD Tether or USD Circle, they have a huge, huge pile of cash, right? What we see is uh, algorithmic stablecoins. So we're working, working with uh, Terra for USD, Frax, F-R-A-X, with their whole new concept of uh, fractional, but also consumer purchase uh, index of stable coins. Those are really thought leaders in this space. Obviously, there's another project called uh, Liquity. All of these stable coin innovation, we want to attract them because like, their fees and their transition speed is going to eat them if they only think about whether it's possible in Ethereum. The other full other spectrum is both DAO and NFT is going full speed now. And that's where the fun is. We actually are launching 10 DAO, $1 million each to just say, go crazy. Just do whatever wow. can be in the decentralized, managing many of the, our foundation treasury is really happening very well. Wow, that's amazing. So basically, uh, if you're developers or want to build applications on it, there are 10 DAOs mm -hmm. with a million dollars each to apply to. Mm -hmm. Wow, like so, wow, that's amazing. I, I, may, I may go for that, I don't know, probably not, but that's really <laughs> please, cool. I'm not a developer, please be really. one of our governors. No. <laughs> and I think that's a story, right? We do know that Tesla or even for sure Uniswan, who's not these days, have more than billion dollar treasury, right? What are they sure. going to do with it? Yeah, you're right. They are, not, they are only going to have like, well, I don't EOS know. bought Bitcoin with it. And that's why EOS is, <laughs> is it's so well. Uh, <laughs> EOS did, treasury did. block one bought all Bitcoin Which is it. fine. Which that was is smart, great. Right? <laughs> but, but let me ask you, right? Now you are such, build such an amazing decentralized network. Now you are back to maybe even nine board members, never mind 21. Only nine board members to manage a one billion dollar treasury. What's the deal, right? Yeah. <laughs> we honestly also started with Harmony Foundation too, but only to set the direction. Recruit the best governors, how, having uh, managed the treasury up to this point. The future is really. We already announced today there will be like we we're starting with ten. We literally hope, and we are, are not even saying here even hundred thousand in coming years, right? Hopefully one million each. We wow. already announced a $1 million hackathon even for the next few months. So all the development as well as all the uh, like decentralized, uh, like, uh, 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 like all these organizations making uh, different product happen must be the only way. How can my listeners contact you, get involved in the Harmony ecosystem? How can mm. they get involved? 
I don't want to forget to ask that. Oh, absolutely. As I mentioned, the best is follow um, my Twitter. Um, as so I have a very short one, hopefully everyone easy to uh, understand. I would love to have as many followers as Charlie by the end of this podcast. Amazing. Uh, it is, uh, it is just um, Stephen T- uh, C. So it's S-T-S-C is my um, uh, Twitter characters. handle. We are Harmony Protocol. If you check out our website, harmony.one.ond, we really believe the whole concept of uh, building lots of, a lot of things, one for all and all for one, one bridge to bridge it together. We announced many of our initiatives, really hoping for the DAO people to just step up. Most of all, we even giving a fixed hourly rate for the people who even want to just nominate themselves as the DAO governor. By the time they are fully governor, they have 50,000, 100,000, even to begin with, to manage their own budget. So we're really coming to the point of very much like public. Uh, well, public, this is uh, like office, next right? level governance yeah. right here. You have exactly it built that. into the DAO, basically like different yeah. uh, roles and responsibilities exactly with that. payment. Wow, that's. You never think of these things. And it's happening. No, that's lives. crazy. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I know everyone talked about DAO since like the what the DAO hack 20, of yeah. Ethereum back in the time, right? But DAO tools have changed very differently now. There are snapshots, there are online forum voting. We have multi-sig with Gnosis, Safe Fork. So all these things uh, are really happening. Most of all, we put one million to 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 actions, right? It doesn't get any better wow. than like there are really actions and uh, money that you can budget on. Wow. S- Steven, Harmony yeah. Protocol, thank you so much. Amazing. Yeah, has been fun. Yes, this I, you blew my world. I know a lot of people are probably going over. Thank you for, for sponsoring this episode of Untold Stories. And, and oh, I'm really for sure. excited for, to, to have done this live. You know, this is my first live one in a while, probably like a week or two. Awesome. And there's something about being able to talk to all of our listeners about what's going on in the industry is important to me because like, there are so many bear markets that I just cried under my bed and I wish I had someone live telling me that it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to, I am telling you, you're going to be okay. You're going to be great. Well, this now I a, know that because it's a very like a, tough market, but the great thing is builders have not stopped. Yeah. You're hearing that everyone, they're building. You just look at the metrics. Don't look at the prices. A lot of times prices are suppressed on purpose for accumulation mm-hmm. reasons. Look at the metrics. Look at where our industry is going. Look at the growth. Mm-hmm. Look at the jobs that has been created. Look at the total amount of capital in mm-hmm. certain blockchains and protocols and what is going on in the amount of building that's happening. Mm-hmm. Look at the job postings. People are leaving. They're, le- they're, ex- they're leaving other industries in droves to come here. Exactly. It's amazing. Thank you so much again. I'll talk to you soon. Same here. Thank you so much, Charlie. Thanks for having us today.